Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we are doing an unboxing of Death of an Armory, Epris 1914. This is volume one in the Great War Battle series from Revolution Games. Um, this, uh, it's an unboxing, but you know, they don't come wrapped from Revolution, and that's fine. They come in a, they do come in a very convenient plastic bag to keep them safe, but they are not actually shrink wrap because they are uh, assembled here in the United States. So, um, small company, great games. So, take a quick look here. This is designed by Carrie Anderson, developed by Roger Miller of Revolution. This is a uh, two-player game. I don't believe it's very solo friendly, apart from just you know playing true solo, playing both sides to the best of your ability. There may be some hidden information, but. Uh, uh, you are, you know, one side is the Germans, one side is the Allies. The Allies. Uh, the breakthrough will be the, of decisive importance. We must and will therefore conquer, settle forever with the centuries long struggle in the war, and strike the decisive blow against our most detested enemy. We will finish with the British, Indians, Canadians, Moroccans, and other trash, feeble adversaries who surrender in great numbers if they are attacked with vigor. The Order of the Day issued on 29 October and found on a dead officer of the 15 Corps. So let's crack it open and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so just a quick note Dear Diary. Dear customer, counter sheet three should only be half a sheet. The other half of the sheet is a duplicate, so you got double counters. It's pretty cool. At least it'll let you know up front so you don't have to solve the mystery. Uh, we have one six sided die. And I rolled six, which means I win the game. Right, and then we've got our, this is our uh, Death and Army marker reference. And if you get the polybag version, this would be your cover as opposed to the box version. So this tells you what all the different markers do, which we will see here shortly. So obviously it's gonna be, with only half sheet of counter, it's gonna be very low counter density, which is kinda of nice. And then we have our charts. Fire combat results table, you get two of these. Chart one, melee combat results table, harassing fire results table. Notes on stacking limits, color codes for the counters, and unit sizes. And on the back of both is a terrain effects chart. So obviously one for each player. And these are on uh, nice uh, coated cardstock. You know, not uh, just regular old paper cardstock. It's coated. And then we have our setup chart. This is chart four. So what is our other charts here? Let's see, that was chart three. That's chart two, so this is chart four. And this is the setup for the French eighth, the German sixth, the German fourth, and the British expeditionary force in 1914. And then the Fabex attack scenario setup. How the French set up, the BEF sets up, the fourth army and the sixth army. All right, now we've got the exclusive rules. So they're starting out with volume one, having the rules that are specific to Death of an Army, and then you'll get the series rules. So they're already ready to go, they're on top of their game. So this is, and no pun was intended by, that, by the way. All right, so this is a quick fold out four pager. Pretty dense, starts with uh, section 16 kind of a neat way to do it. So this will be sections one through 15, and then this will, and I assume subsequent games in the series will also start with 16 to describe the components and special rules, general rules, setup and reinforcement schedule, and then define your scenarios. So this has three scenarios. The first captures the initial meeting of the opposing armies, while the second focuses on the main German attack led by General Fabek, and the final scenario is the entire battle. So as you guys set those up, then you get some designer's notes for this specific game, as well as the bibliography and the credits. And then we get into the main rule book. And this is a 
This is only 12 pages, including the designer's notes at the end. So uh, large print, uh, black and white, no color, obviously, and uh, you know dense text. I mean, it's it's, it's you know there's a lot of white space, but it's uh, it is you know it's full text. It's you're going to read like a lot of Revolution games. Oh, there's there's a few pictures there. Uh, with examples, the coordinated combat phase, the movement phase, the hasty combat phase. So, um, but it's it's you know a pretty decent font as you can see. Pretty, not too big, uh, but definitely not too uh, microscopic. So, quick 12 pages of rules there, with a table of contents on the front, so you can find what rule you're looking for. Well, I take it back when we saw it wasn't counter dense. That's just the markers. So we have we have this one here, which is straight up counters. Obviously, the different is the French and the BEF, along with some additional markers they have here, and they look very clean, well registered. They are corner nibbed, so you'll have to trim those with the organ laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder the perfect tool for the job most of them are double-sided and then counter that's counter sheet one then we go to counter sheet three now this is the one that appears to be the markers that is a duplicate as you can see these are the same on both sides so you got two sets of these so you would not need all of these although maybe with the march orders and stuff you could use extras but you'll see these units get duplicated as well. So it does include some units that get duplicated. So you probably want to just separate this off and save it for later. And you'll know this because it's counter sheet three and you can tell by the game turn marker that you get two of them and you don't need two of them. And then counter sheet two, which is the Germans. And then lastly, we've got our map. This is a 22 by 17 map. Gonna unfold it. Try to take a look at it as best we can here. All right. So you've got your uh, turn track, your basically your calendar at the top, going from October 20th to it appears November 12th. All right, with the uh, reinforcements clearly indicated and different. Uh, different events that happen. The offboard artillery section up here. And then the hexes are pretty large for the counter, so, you know, uh, looks like it's gonna hold, or be easy to manage, you know, so without one hex against another hex really bumping into each other. So this is the Ipperus region. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. It's very um, single-sided, obviously. It's very um, thick, thick paper. Very, um, I mean, it's not too thin. Obviously, you're gonna want to put something on it. Since it's not a mounted map, you'll want to put some uh, plexiglass on it to, uh, to lay it flat. But it is a 22 by 17 inch map. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Death of an Army, Ipress 1914 from Revolution Games, you are going to get that map we just looked at. You're gonna get two sheets, two full sheets of unit counters for the four factions involved, or the four armies involved. Then you're gonna get one set of counters, markers that are duplicated. So you have double your pleasure there. You're gonna get the series rules, a 12 page rule book. Not too dense, probably about 10 pages of actual rules. And then you're gonna get the four page exclusive rules for this particular game in the series. You're gonna get five charts. We got uh, chart four, chart five. Chart one is duplicated, one for each player with a terrain chart on the back. And then chart three. And then you're gonna get the little notice that reminds you that one set of counters is a duplicate. And that is everything that comes in. Oh, oh. Gonna die. And that is everything that comes in Death of an Army.
from Revolution Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!